Yes, yeah. my brother. Set it we off. Say, I go. Amen. Amen. I go. Amen. Amen. And you are all welcome. Akwaba. Akwaba. Do you know how to respond? Yeah. 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 You can say, yeah, all me that say. So, your friend is Kofi. My name is Kofi. Kofi. You can call me Mark Tate. I'm the tour guide. We are doing a walking tour. It's taking us for roughly 45 minutes to maybe one hour or a little over one hour. And after an introduction, we will see places like the dungeons. We go to the mill dungeon first to see what happened to the enslaved Africans. We come out to the yard and talk about some graves. Then move on to the female dungeons to make it gender balance. Then to the door of no return. However, I promise today we are all going to return peacefully. Yes. From there we'll have ourselves <coughs> condemned in a cell. And if God willing we survive the condemnation and still have some strength and a time, and we shall go up to see the residents of British people. But before I start the tour, let me say that we are going to talk about the trans Atlantic slave trade. And the story is very, very sad and emotional. So please, if it is your first time here, psychologically, you have to be strong. Yes. Yes. Now this is historic Cape Coast Castle. But the word Cape Coast itself, it is a corrupted Portuguese word from the word Cabo Corso, which means short Cape. And that one was corrupted into Cape Coast by the British people. And this building we have here is the youngest and the last castle in this country. We have three castles in Ghana and several of the forts along the coast that were built by Europeans. And almost all of them were used for trans Atlantic slave trade. But the first one is the one at Elmina. It was built around 1482 by Portuguese under the leadership of one Don Diego G. Azambuja. We have one castle in Accra that was built around 1661 by the Danes. Mm -hmm. This one was built by the English in 1665. So if you look at the ages, this one is the youngest. And this one was built at the time slip trade that we are coming to talk about today. It started in Africa for close to 200 years already. And it was at eight peak because slip trade started at Elmina Castle, the first one but not this one. It was during the 1500, when in the history of the whole world, there was this man called Christopher Columbus. He said he discovered the Americas. So when he said so, the Spanish moved from Europe to those places and established their plantations and their mines where they needed labor to work. So they tried to use the local people called the Native Americans, but the Red Indians to work for them. But according to the same Europeans, they said those people were not strong and they were dying from diseases. So there was a Catholic bishop, his name was Bartolomeo de Las, de Las Casas. He suggested to the Spanish to look for alternative sources of labor to replace the Native Americans. <coughs> what happened was that even before the start of the trans Atlantic slave trade, the Europeans came to build the castles like this along the coast of West Africa. There was what we call the trans Saharan trade which the Arabs took some blacks through the Saharan desert to Europe. So some of those people were taken from Europe to the New World and they tried them. And they proved to be physically strong. So at first, Europeans were taking Africans from Europe to their farm to work for them in America. But with time, Africans in Europe got finished because they were not all that many. So they had to come back to the land of Africa again to take Africans to the New World. And that was the time Portuguese built the first castle at Elmina. They were coming there in, they were coming there to in, or they came there in search of gold. So Portuguese were there were given a legal license. They call it ASEAN to legally transport Africa from Elmina to the New World. So West Africa, Portuguese, started the whole thing. They were there for about 150 years by and selling our people. Then that attacked them. It happened 1637. So that were there for about 50 years before British came here. When British got here in 1664, Dachua Telmina occupied this piece of land. So British fought them in 1664. And in 1664, historically, something happened in the world. A state in America called New York, then New Amsterdam, 
also changed hands from Dutch to British. So the same year, British got this land from Dutch. So when the British got the land, they developed the castle gradually. You send free, cheap African labor. And the way they built it, the dungeons we are going to see today had the capacity to hold about 1,300 enslaved Africans at one particular time. Men were always 1,000, women 300. They separated them. They kept them here two weeks minimum, maximum three months. All depends on their ships. But 1807, British came out with a law said they stop slave trade. That was led by one William Weberforce. 1814, that just did the same thing. But from then to 1860 Africa, slave trade did not stop. It continued for over 40 years. So British named that one illegal. So 1860, everything stopped. So this tractor was used by the British as a colonial administrative center. And the British controlled the building to the time we gained independence on the 6th of March, 1957. Then we moved the British out of the castle. So the castle, 1665, that British built using our own people till now, is 354 years old. That is the age of this castle. Almina, the oldest, is about 537 years old. But before the castle was built like this by the English, this piece of land changed hands several times. It will shock you to know that Portuguese came in first. They came around 1555. They were in search of ivory and gold. They stayed here for a while, then they abandoned the land. Then 1654, Swedish also took over this land mm -hmm. because of gold. So while the Swiss were here, it's about three years. Danes came to attack the Swiss. The Danes also were here because of gold. So while the Danes were here, Dutch also attacked the Danes again. So when the Danes were defeated, they went to build the castle in Accra called Christiansburg or Osu Castle. So while Dutch thought they conquered everybody, 1664 British finally defeated the Dutch. So when the British defeated the Dutch, and they built the castle. They knew other Europeans would come to attack them. So they brought cannons, see the cannons all over for defense. That's why they stayed here for a longer time, and nobody defeated them. And when slavery started also, as a matter of fact, Europeans alone could not have captured all the millions of Africans who passed through the dungeons. But that is also not to tell you that Africans sold their own people just like some people are assuming. Now, Europeans created a system at that time in Africa that was very difficult for Africans to resist. And that system is still with us in the 21st century. Let me tell you what happened. There were several ways of getting the people. One, Europeans captured some of the Africans using guns. They partnered some Africans, they worked with some Africans to capture other Africans. There were other Africans called slave raiders, like armed robbers of today. When Europeans came here, because they knew what they were coming to do, they identified those people. So they supplied them guns. They gave them sardine, mero, champagne, tobacco, secondhand clothing, other things. And they were doing butter trade. So these people, because there was no money to pay for, they would organize themselves into groups like this group. And they would go and raid the villages at gunpoint. They would capture some people. They'll bring them to the Europeans in exchange for foreign goods. And the last one that brought about more than half of the Africans, more than 50% of the Africans, was ethnic conflicts, intertribal wars. And we have to understand that before Europeans came to Africa in 1471, which was the Portuguese, at that time there was nothing like today's country Ghana, Nigeria, Togo, Burkina Faso, that kind of thing. We had kingdoms, empires. African states. So for that matter, the Africans govern themselves. So we're more democratic than some people thought. So for that matter, Africans, they had issues over a boundary. Sometimes they fight over a boundary just to expand their kingdoms. Sometimes they fight over land they perceive to be rich of gold or diamond. But before Europeans came, Africans who were here go to wars with weapons like bows and arrows. When they go to war with distance, after a long fight, one tribe will lose. The losers will be taken as domestic slaves. Those people, to a large extent, they had some amount of freedom. They could marry, mm. raise free children. Mm. They could acquire property. Later, they were integrated into the family system. Mm. They were not kept in buildings like us. Mm. They were also not transported to Europe and America. Mm. They were free people in society. And I believe that system of slavery has been with human since time immemorial. In ancient Rome, Egypt, that kind of thing. Let me give you an example. In Ghana, I can tell you 
on authority that not long ago, if you own somebody and you hasn't got that money to pay, you can allow your son, your daughter, sometimes your wife, to go and work for the person you are owing for a number of years just to pay the debt. To the period at which you work, you are a slave. If you are working like that and you are a woman and you are beautiful with a good character, then somebody from the master's family should get married to you. Automatically, you free yourself from a slave to be part of the family. Because there's no way I can make my wife a slave. I don't think that many can do the same thing. So before your friends came, we had this system on this continent of Africa. But when they came, immediately the situation changed. Immediately capitalized on our system. So they introduced guns to the African people. And we know the power of the gun. They brought sardine, tobacco, champagne, those things. And these things were, if you like, imposed on African leaders. The leaders then were chiefs. Then there was nothing like presidents. The chiefs were ruling, they were to pay. But the system was still better. So in this case, the chiefs were organizing themselves in a group like this. They would use their guns to go and fight the other tribes. Because Europeans would tell Africans that they need those guns to protect themselves, fight their neighbors, take everything. If the guns get to you as a chief, the only option available is to organize your men, use your guns against the other tribes. Because if you refuse to fight as a leader, others will come and fight you. So the more they go to the war, the more they captured innocent men and women like us in the exchange for foreign goods. They created that division among the people, divide and rule, divide and conquer. And the people were not only from Ghana, let's be frank. Some came from Ghana, southern parts. Some from the three northern regions, including the Ashanti, BA. Some from Togo, Nigeria, Burkina Faso. We are places in Ghana like Salaga, in the northern part of the country. Sandema, <coughs> Tumu, Dikoro, these were centers where they gathered them after the war or the conflict. When they get a huge number, like about 100 or more, they put them in chains. They start to walk. They walked. They spent sometimes four or five months walking. No stop. They came barefooted in a forest. Many died on the way. When they got to a sea manso, then they had a stopover. They would bath them. They would shave their heads, give them food to eat to regain some lost energy. Smear them with shea butter and oil for them to look healthy and attractive. From there, when they arrived in the castle, they were not given the chance to bath till they were taken away. <laughs> so when they arrived here, they were taken to a place called Palava Hall. That was where they auctioned them. After auctioning, they would burn them. They would design that in the form of mental stamp. They put it in fire. When it's hot, they will brand you. They take them back to the dungeon. So these were the ways they were brought in here. And if you look at the system at that time, and the, the system in the 21st century, what is happening globally, to me, nothing has really changed. Oh, okay. They only modernize the system. Okay. The system is still in place. Yes. Yes. Now they will tell you about peacekeeping, mm -hmm. but they will never talk about the weapons. Mm -hmm. Those days they brought the weapons to create a division among the people, mm -hmm. and they get more people. Mm -hmm. Now the weapons are still going to places. Now they will tell you peacekeeping. So if this African so their own people, we agree. Some of our people participated unknowingly. But they should be frank and tell us that they also brought guns to the Africans to fight. Then we shall be happy. But if they are say African soldiers without talking about the weapon, then there's something missing somewhere. Yeah. Deception. So this, in a way, a brief background. Any question before? Yes, we were the Arabs also involved in the They were camp? involved. They were slavers also. Yes, they enslaved Africans for more than Europeans did. Yes, they did. But Japan. they took this through the Saharan desert. They walked through the desert. They crossed the sea. They got to Europe. So before Europeans came here, some Africans ended up in Europe. And those days, Europeans, who, uh, according to the Europeans, is the rich people who love to have Africans in their homes as servants. So small people were taken to Europe to go and work in their, in their homes. Spain and Lisbon, those places. Long ago, we are talking about a thousand years ago. So that one ended before this one started. So that was called the Trans-Saharan Trade. This one is called the Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade. Now, because of the routes they use, they use the ocean. That's what they call it, the, the Trans-Atlantic Slave Trade. We have what you call the Triangular Trade. The route is a triangle. They <coughs> here with captives to the New World. They will leave the captives in the New World. They will take raw materials from their farms in America. <coughs> they go back to Europe with their raw materials. They will leave their raw materials in Europe and they will bring finished goods to Africa. So they are moving from here in the Americas back to Europe to West Africa. That's called the triangular trade. And because they use the ocean, 
or they call it the trans atlantic slave trade. Right. I hope I didn't miss uh, what you were saying, but the other day we were at, uh, I forget what city it is, the gate of no return. Mm -hmm. So that was a different exit for the Africans leaving here, and this was something totally different. Which one? That was the 